welcome back to Juro 3 YouTube channel. Okay, in this uh, this project, we are rebuilding a uh, rebuilding, refurbishing, upgrading a Daiwa DR7600. I've got the casings here at the present moment. Uh, I'm going to show you what I've done with those and the mask lamps, of course. And then I'll be showing what I've done with the motors and everything. So basically, everything you see here has been glass be blasted. The inside of this didn't get done, but everywhere else got done. Um, inside of this got done, so everything got done, glass bead, glass bead blasted, it was then etch primed and painted in this pewter grey. Um, so the other thing I've done is I have just put recoil, M8 recoil inserts into each of the mounting holes. Um, they just, you know, if you don't know a recoil, you, know, you drill it out, you replace the, the, the thread with a, or the stainless steel thread. Um, and these are recoils, these are the Australian ones. Um, I've also, um, the, there was a slight crack in the top of one of these, so I put too long a bolt in. As you can see, you hand straight through. So I drilled them straight out and I put uh, recoils in these as well. You can see they're nice and shiny, so there's recoils in each of these. So as you can see, this has been painted as well. The bearing, this one, the inside wasn't done at last bit by, so you can see the track is in pretty good condition. Um, and I've just done a light polish up of the bottom track since it got hit with the glass bead blasting. So that's all ready to go. Um, again, this was the uh, bearing ring has been painted as well. And that's all been done. And the light shining up. And basically, these are the older style clamps. So you have thread on one side, and this is the actual bolt side. So basically, this has all been glass bead blasted and uh, etch primed and painted. And then I've put um, in, uh, recoil, M, M8 recoil inserts into this as well. So there you can see they're nice and shiny inside. There's four of those. So basically these are ready to go. I'll first do it with these old clamps because when you're using stainless steel bolts and the old ones they would actually react with the aluminium quite badly and sometimes you can't undo your um, your mask clamp which is not a good thing to do. So basically that's all those I will stop recording now and I shall go over and I shall get all the motor bits and pieces and chassis and whatnot and I shall show you what's happening with that. I'll catch you shortly. Okay we're back. A bit crooked there. Well I forgot to mention um, in the previous section um, I'm putting a um, 7 pin um, LTW socket in this which utilizes this um, bracket I had made up and that will fit through from the inside so it comes from the inside you pre-wire it slide it from the inside and a, a, there's a gland on the on the inside and then there's a nut on the outside so you just do it up you want to service it just pull it out pull the whole guts out you haven't got to unsolder anything so basically it's a lot better so this just fits on here like this this is stainless steel I will be uh, siliconing this on and basically it will be locked on permanently you haven't got to take it off ever again so basically um, that's that's there I forgot to mention it before so that's going to happen too as well um, the reason I'm using uh, the 7 pin because I'm going to be wiring the limit switches uh, return um, for limit switch LED uh, in the controller that will be used with this so, so basically you just want to get that out of the road and I'll mention more about that um, in a second so we just get those out of the road, and there's the uh, LTW plug. These are a um, basically a five piece. So we have a little, there's a little washer in here, fits in there. Um, there we are, and there's a gland in the back. So basically, they are IP67 rated LTW, as you can see in there. It phones to focus, maybe. So it just all screws together. All, um, I think it's all high, um, ABS or hyper impact plastic. Righty, righty, let's move on. So, the motor itself, the, um, the KR600 KR slash DR7600, same thing. Uh, this motor was completely stripped down. Um, the top and bottom housings, um, as you see, there was a little bit of electrolysis on here. That was a bit rough now. That was glass bead blasted. This was glass bead blasted and recoated in a clear. I cleaned up the actual motor um, laminations and painted it silver. Um, so it looks pretty close, I mean, and it looks alright. Um, I've got a polish up inside of here yet uh, for the brake bit. Um, so yeah, that's that's ready to go. Um, I've 
already had a um, had a the original um, motorcycle capacitor in the rotator, but the bracket itself, it's on the side that I don't like. It's actually on the on what I classify as the wrong side. So this is where the this is where your potentiometer is, and their bracket sits here. So you've got to clamber over the wiring's only go over the over there. I put mine on this side, so you're only going over or around the actual not a sharp object. Um, because their bracket was quite big, even if I put my one here, it would be a lot smaller than their one was. So, but you know, even so, mine doesn't fit this way. Mine only fits that way, and it mounts in there. So it's a lot better and much easier to get the wiring to the plug and everything. So, so basically, that's what I'm doing. So this one, the little bracket I, ha I made up, I make up, I should say, and it all the tabs just fold over on the actual um, on the motorcycle capacitor. The different, the big. This is the main difference between a um, Kempro KR600 and a Dial 7600. The motorcycle capacitor is in the rotator, where it should be. Uh, I'll be putting brand spanking new uh, limit switches in. Um, brand spanking new um, potentiometer, and this is all brand new wiring. To I'm rewiring the whole thing. The only, the, the only original wiring will be the wiring coming out of the motor. So basically, and this is the wiring I'll be using. This is some uh, all tin copper wire that I got. This is a trailer cable wire that's all tin copper. So basically, I use this and that gets wired up. I take a bit of most of this comes off anyway, but this small piece just goes between this short section here and this, this short turn. This sort of the yellow wires are for the limit switch return, so I'll get more of that later on. So basically, um, all the rest of the parts are in not bad condition. Um, so basically, these are all those the, the potential gears and everything. Bolts, I think I did replace these bolts. Um, the screws down here were replaced as well. BK spring is in reasonable condition. And the the uh, potential, uh, potential, not buddy potentiometer. It's a, um, I'll get the word in a minute. <laughs> Cheery me, I got a buddy that forgets his today. We'll get back. It's a um, the dry gear. Um, pinion gear, that's what I'm thinking of and the BK Butterfly in good condition and we also have on here I'll see if I can drop them we've got the little Eclipse here on here this is the actual insulator for the um, for the potentiometer and we've got the other uh, the, uh, wi uh, the wires Jeez, the actual um, screws for the limit switches and stuff so yeah so getting on to the next section so basically I had to replace the top housing and this is a different bottom housing a chassis I should say top top chassis bottom chassis because the chassis did have a little bit of rust on it and that's gone off to get um, resync plate and everything so I've got a KR this is actually a late model um, late model chassis so basically it, it's the pressed out version for and this, so there's no um, it's all pressed out here so this is the later version. I prefer these ones. Uh, you haven't got the, all the rest of the um, the spaces in the bottom. They wobble around and things. So basically, so I had to make um, since I had to take off since the top chassis, this top chassis, the original top chassis was rusty as well. I had to take off the fiber gear um, to clean it up because the original um, uh, stud for it it was rusty. It was a bit tight. So basically, everything's come off. Um, and basically, I then fitted and re-drilled a lot of holding points there's some blanks here these have been filled in um, but, but these are original car 400 mounting points so uh, I put in the new points that's where the original um, the original uh, gear was so with, with a 600 so if, if in a different position or a 7600 in a different position so basically this is now a um, a later version uh, top housing as well so so I've done all the hole drill all the holes for the limit switches are there and there um, and I put the uh, uh, hole through for the wiring and I've redone the holes for the motor so basically this is all done so then you can see the, the gears back in again uh, everything's in and that's all pre -gre that's all been greased up as well so that's all been done now the this bottom housing was resin pl plated um, and this I've actually had these fingerprints all over I've had the actual posts um, resync plated as well. So as you might notice, we have a focus, 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 focus. Find something else I haven't missed here. I've got a lot of. 
that might make a bit. So okay, extra lighting. So I have my solid um, KD thirty eight T um, seven mil um, solid gear. This is actually replacing the loose and four part individually stacked up gears that replaces those. And this new version of my KD thirty new version is KD thirty eight thirty eight T is actually thicker than the original. As if put these side by side and we get it lined up, it is thicker. It I get it in the right position. I, I should look at the camera, not look at what I'm looking at. So basically, it's actually thicker. So it's one more thicker. Uh, and basically, when I pull this apart, I've, I've, this, I've shown these in other videos, and also I've respaced all the gears, so I'll get these off, uh, put new spaces on these. The first drive gear, and as you see in here, this has got a recess in it to accommodate the next gear, so it sits down and remains the right height because you can't come, you cannot come up any higher because you hit the first gear, the first, the number one gear. So this is the raised section and it's been pressed out and has this little plate on the bottom and basically that just holds the shaft in place. I've also uh, done my normal job on these where I put um, cold chisel marks parallel all the way around and then I press them back in again and basically that means these things ain't going nowhere. They can't turn, they can't twist, they can't wear because these holes do get a bit worn out because the shafts spin so fast. Not that they spin very fast on this, but they still spin around. So I'm basically trying to eliminate that. And plus they, they tend to be very loose as well. So which then puts more pressure on the top housing as well. Cause that's your two points for those. So everything's spinning around and wears things. So I've actually um, spaced these up a bit too as well. Um, and uh, basically got them to sit at, the, at a good height. So because they tend to have this one sitting down a little bit too far. So there we go. So as you can see, this was nice and shiny. I mean, have fingerprints all over it. Bloody hell. So all the bolts, everything's done. So really, all I need to do now is start assembling it. And I shall get back to you um, when I get to a certain section. This whole thing's going to be totally rewired. So um, there we go. There's the KD38T. 38T. This is a 7mm version. I had 7mm shafts. I have an 8mm version when I, I bore these out to 8mm shaft holes, hole sizes. But you'll see that in other videos as well. So solid gear as opposed to it's made in Australia here from a local company that I deal with. So basically solid gear. Not going to break that Mari. Right anyway, I shall catch you in the next section. Wait. Okay, righto, we're back. Okay, um, I have assembled the motor and the pinion and the BK brake system and I've run it up. Um, I pre-grease these and then I run them up for 10-15 minutes. Um, right and left to make sure they're all good and expelling any excess grease that I've got in there. I run a really light grease um, um, from uh, I can't think of the company now but it's a really light grease. I put a bit of excess in there and then I allow it to spin up and um, and exude any excess and all the rest will fall to the bottom. Uh, these are actually not too bad at, at retaining the grease at the bottom and I can always add a little bit to the side uh, where you do the grub scrub through so you actually there's a little bit of grease sitting in there. So that's ready to go. Um, just an update on the uh, on the um, the uh, the socket uh, mount uh, for the chassis. So this is it's in position. It's been siliconed um, and screwed in place. So, so that's all ready to go. And I have um, put the um, assembled the gears and got them all spaced up nicely and all the spaces on there. And I've put on the uh, potentiometer and new potentiometer. With these short sharp potentiometers you've got to run the actual pot gear up the other way. Um, and you set it up so the grub screw doesn't hit the gear. So you sort of sign up here and put the uh, at full this way. You put the um, grub screw there just before it hits the gear and then it goes right around and only just misses on this side so and I raise up as high as I can as well so so that's all in there ready to go it's been I had a bit of grease on it um, so as you can see the uh, all the gears have got the I'm using molybdenum disulfite grease and this one this has already been wired up so basically what I'm going to do oh and um, this is in place I've greased that as well 
So basically I'm just going to drop this on here to show it going together when I get the orientation the right way around. I'm going to align the first gear with the other gear, make sure it's aligned. Lock them in a place. As you can see, oh, uh, there's the spacing on these is pretty good now, so the shafts actually come up within about half a millimetre of the top now. Before they were hanging down a mile, um, and I didn't think it was very good, so I fixed it. So basically, I remember what I did now. The, the shafts themselves were out of a KR400, which has one extra gear in the drivetrain. That's what it was, I couldn't remember what I did. Um, so I was able to shorten the shafts from the bottom to um, get the spacing at the top exactly right. Um, always, always sorry about the noise. Get the little gun going. So they always, all the gear, all the shafts are always. You've got heaps of end float and flopping around. So when you lift them all the way up, they're actually nearly halfway out of the bottom chassis. So. I always like to get them nice and tight um, in, in there, so so basically um, that's good to go. So basically now we can, for intents and purposes, when I orientate the motor the right way around, because it's a bit of a pain sometimes, it's three, I always seem to get it wrong the first couple of times. There it goes, not that way, it only goes one way. It only goes one way. Only that it. And all the lines are marked up, so basically it comes out this side. Cool, only that it. We'll drop my screws in there. I'm going to go away and align. I'm actually, this is all. How do I go over here so I can see what I'm doing? Get the screws into there. I'll have to make sure that I aligns on the gear properly. Uh, you want it to have a very small amount of backlash, allowing for any uh, uneven, um, unevenness, unevenness from the centre of the gear. So that is a fibre gear, so you never know if it's exactly 100% um, in the middle. And same with any gear, so you always spin it round which is pretty hard to do with the BK brake system now because just, you can't spin it. So basically I'm just going to have to make sure when I turn, grab hold of the gear, get your finger inside and then I see and I hold the actual brake here and I physically feel, pinion I should say, and I actually physically hear or actually probably can't see it. There's just a little bit of backlash Probably look too much, so we can actually move the motor across a bit. Might nip this up a bit more because they're just a little bit loose. I might not be easy for me to not do it behind the camera, but grab hold of the, uh, the number one gear. Grab hold of the stop there. There's my thumb in here. There's my thumb sitting there holding the the uh, pinion gear, and then I just watch. No, but too much backlash now, so I need to go back the other way a bit. Well, I mean, no backlash, I should say. It was as tight as. Oh, yeah, no, it's gone too far. So, we just want a little bit. Back a bit. There we are. Righty, eight. Make a note. I shall leave it there, and we shall carry on. Right now, we're back. Okay, I have um, now done a bit of rewiring. I forgot I needed to put a uh, not a brown wire there, a purple wire because I've already got a brown wire in this uh, in this loom section. So basically, I've now um, got that all done. Uh, I've terminated the plug, as you can see, the gland is on. So basically, I am going to drop it in here. So basically, all you need to do, when you find the uh, the it's got a, a flat section one side that goes on the flat section here on that side there. So basically just do a bit of twist around, slide him in. Nothing so I'm doing. Oops, don't 
wires doing that. Okay, the wires want to be a pain. One down you go. up in a minute. Right, I need to get these wires so they don't get caught on either of these corners here, so we're just going to force them underneath. There we go. Get the grease off me. Drop our five screws in. screwdriver over. Get this started. <coughs> I said little screwdrivers, so number two. So let's just start these off just so they make sure they don't get cross threaded. I want to hit it with the um, impactor. Noise maker. Roddy Addy. I'll just uh, lock this up with a the shifter in a minute or spanner and that will be ready to go I can actually now move on to the next section get all the bearings in I'm going to do a basic alignment check everything with the controller um, the controller will be the next thing I'll be looking at um, this one is going to be controlled by a, um, a CR4 controller that I've got and upgraded um, with a few other bits and pieces which I'll show you maybe in this video I'll sh in this video I'll see how to go um, all good we shall move forward and we shall catch you soon. Right now we're back. Okay, I have just finished doing the alignment of this uh, of this um, DR7600. So basically, there's my alignment marks. Um, you've got to get there and tweak the um, the position of the pot gear and everything, and make sure it's all good. So basically, this is all all happy now, um, and it's aligned pretty well. Um, and I thought I'd show at this point I'd show you the controller. That is going to be used with this this rotator. Um, this is a, uh, used to be a what was a dial or a CR4P controller. Um, I've done quite a few little mods to this thing. Um, so yeah, I just thought I'd show you around this uh, controller. It now has LED illumination, uh, and I have a, um, a dual coloured LED in the. Oh, this makes a bit of grease on the lens. Damn. Got that clean off. Um, in the end of the needle there's a little illumination, um, um, well there's an LED in the middle which shoots lights up into the end. Well I normally put a blue LED in there, well now I've put a dual colour LED in there so it's blue and then when it gets to the limit end stops, as I'm coming around to the south here, it actually turns into red at the end. Uh, where I used to put it, I used to put a little hole just here and put a little LED just in here, well now I've actually got it in here and I've got a new little control board to do this. So basically, this is the prototype board um, sitting in here. This is where you normally have the wiring for the actual uh, the, the lamps anyway. Um, so basically, I have two 5mm LEDs in there, and then down in, in here, wiring runs in. There's three wires running off the end of this PCB, which goes into the actual, um, and into there. I have a little relay on here, so I'm actually switching the actual blue right off and then turning the red right on so before uh, the, there would still be blue within the actual um, the bit of light so so basically we have uh, this is basically like uh, the prototype so this is like, like I'm calling this one the wire led plus limit so basically it's emulating the same circuitry to control the brightness of the two LEDs at the front via a um, Sermat 
um, potentiometer like in my Y LEDs um, and this is a DC one so there's not much else in here at all uh, other than the diodes that control the actual switching of the relay which comes straight from the feedback now in this one um, they normally have they don't normally use pin 4 well I use pin 4 to for the limit switch feedback so the limit switch feedback as you can physically see so let's try for a second in this rotator I always wire these in because uh, I'm using 5 core trailer cable so basically I wire the yellow wires in as feedback uh, into in this case which normally would have been to pin 7 um, but in this, this, this case is pin 4 uh, so this has been rewired um, to accommodate um, that controller so basically this is not the standard control uh, configuration anymore so basically as it hits the limit switches bolts is fed back down up through four which then physically goes into one side of the relay and it's got a resistor and a diode in line uh, or diode and then a resistor in line I should say which then turns the relay on when it hits limit so and then when it's not in limit it's actually the end of the, um, the needle is blue so basically uh, what else have I done uh, I don't there's not a lot of mods on this one here um, I normally put IEC sockets and everything on the back here but I didn't do it in this one um, we still have the normal um, positioning, three different voltage positioning for the uh, over here um, for the different size cables. So I've actually made a new cable list up, which you can see there, and referring to the size cables, all using trailer cable. You can use seven. You're using seven core trailer cable now, because um, we're actually using one extra wire instead of six. Now we're using one more. So basically, yeah, so it's all happening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you this a new little mod working. So I'll turn him around, get him back into the picture. You probably won't see the LED, but I'll try to show you it working. I'm just going to um, sort of pretend it's working at the present moment. So I'm all tangled up here. Oh, here we go. My test cables all wrapped around everything. So plug in the... Uh, Rotate it, apply some bolts. What are you adding? First thing I'll try and show you is the actual LEDs working. Now I've got so much light here. Oh god. So okay, I'm gonna turn him on. So it illuminates pretty well and if you probably can see. You now the camera's in the bloody picture. So you can see the little LED at the, at the end. So basically, if I was to uh, ha -ha, hold down the direction switch and just pretending we get to the end stop and I pretend that the needle's been taken up on, see it turned to red? Boom, red. So when it hits there, it goes to, to red. And the same thing applies when I'm going the other direction. When I hit the limit switch, it turns red. Tricky little thing. So there we go. So while we're running around, we'll just just um, show you a bit more features of this controller. It has a lock, a momentary or lock um, uh, feature, so you can just do momentary like this. Or you can have lock, you just hold it down. And then you've got the dial preset, uh, and I've physically got all the dial preset working pretty good. So basically, um, we go back over the preset. I'll do a more in-depth um, when I'm doing the thing later on. So basically, we get to um, that point. Camera's now in the reflection. It's a good idea. It's a little bit out because I was a little bit out here. There we go. So okay, okay. So basically, that's basically showing that new little mod. Um, and just so you know, the uh, little PCB is just made on a bit of um, preformed. Um, um, got holes and everything in the turbo, the uh, yeah, tracks and holes, I should say. So basically, we had a couple one watt diode uh, resistors, a uh, diode just sitting down in here. There's our control resistors, uh, our cement pot. When I, I'm going to get these made up, uh, but I'm going to flip everything around because I found the wiring, as you probably did or did not notice. The wiring comes up and goes in the top. When I made the board, I was thinking upside down. 
Uh, so the potentiometer will be at the top and everything's going to be mirror reversed and that's going to be at the bottom when I get to make these. So, and again only held in by one screw where the original um, terminal um, thing was sitting. So basically there we go. So we're all happening. We shall um, carry on and I'm going to finish off um, Oh, and the needle. There's our needle. I'll turn that off now. This is the needle in these things. So they're actually hollow and they have a bit of um, perspex up inside the needle and the LED in this case is sitting down there's a little groove in the end of here and we can't see it there's a groove in the end there that locates into either side of the uh, so it actually doesn't move so that lets the light shine up from the base of that so normally there's a bulb in there which is 360 degrees and half the time they melts these um, the end of these so it's not good and then they sometimes actually fuse and you can't get them apart so basically I put in here an LED but I also LED is actually fit, fitted into here in such an angle that it's got more angle facing up in, and I've got a reflector in there as well I put my little reflector put in there and I'm gluing it in position on as much angle as I can get the 5mm lead to shoot as much light as possible up into, the, into there and it's been working quite well as you saw the light shines up not bad at all okay Doug, i better go and um get these all together i've got a field day to do this weekend so basically i better um get my act together so okay Doug, we shall catch you um when i get back from this this section um well when i get the thing that assembled i should say right. okay we're back well yeah this is all now all done last clamp i've chucked on uh to show you how it all goes together so there we go um, as I mentioned before the these are all got the recoil inserts in here I do have lock nuts for these um, just to lock it off if need be right here, I thought we'd take it for a bit oh, I'll show you what's happening here so I'm using all new stainless steel hardware I've got socket head cap screws in for the um, the base into the um, bearing rings so that's happening there thought we'd take it for a bit of a, a quick drive round before my battery dies so um, you've already seen that oops been this a bit further forward oh yeah, yeah we'll turn him on in a manual mode and uh, as you can see it's facing north you probably can't see the LED but um, the displays all written all up nicely so we'll go for a bit of a um, bit of a go around here And uh, we'll just basically we'll show it stopping at there. And what we'll do is we'll switch it to um, to preset mode, and then that will go around. And then we'll let the limit switches take over down here. We should sort of about one about one eighty. A bit further to go. And there we can see the little limit switch, but we can't see it, but it's actually on now. Let's see on, little red light. There's too much light around here to really show it happening really well. Okay, we'll use the preset to come back up to north. Oh, actually, we'll go to um, 270 degrees. I tried to get the uh, preset to be fairly accurate. I like uh, fairly accurate presets. And that's pretty close. Okay, and we'll um, go up here to north. A little bit over north there, but lots of things. Straighten up this controller a bit. Oh, pretty close. And then we can go back to manual mode again. This is momentary. I like these controllers. You, with this, now we can actually physically lock down with hands free if we wanted to and we'll go to 90 switch it back over to there I was a bit over anyway there but whatever I'm running around to the uh, south my battery's probably going to die very soon so um, I've got to just take some photos of this thing and, um, and then I can get this thing ready to prepare to for, for sale 
And as I said before, I've got a bloody field day to get to, and um, so yeah, so the red light has come on, so all good. No problems. Um, we'll come back to the north. And um, yeah, so that's showing it all done. A bit more of a, of a clean up. And uh, we'll be cooking. So we'll come back up the north. Yeah. So I can get a smack bang on north. There we go. Back up the north again. And click. No problems. Okay. Turn them off. We're out of here. Catch your next project.